On today's episode, we have several exciting updates from the world of space exploration. China has unveiled a new plan for Mars, NASA is getting a new boss, and this leadership change comes just in time to witness the Artemis program falling even deeper into trouble. China has released new details about their upcoming Mars sample return mission, TN3, which is scheduled to launch in 2028 and return the first Mars rock to Earth by 2031. The primary goal of the mission is to identify signs of ancient life and uncover the true past of the Red Planet. TN3 is a key part of China's growing space exploration program following the success of TN11. TN11, which landed a rover on Mars in 2021, spent a little over a year studying the Martian surface. This mission helped lay the groundwork for the complexities involved in a sample return operation. In order to support the challenges of a Mars sample return, TN3 will require multiple launch vehicles. Two Long March 5th rockets are set to lift off in 2028. One will carry an orbiter and return vehicle, while the other will send a lander and ascent vehicle to the Martian surface. The mission team recently shared their approach in a scientific article providing details about where and how the samples will be collected and studied. They have identified 86 potential landing sites, focusing on regions like Christ Planitia and Utopia Planitia. These areas are believed to contain ancient lake beds, deltas, and coastlines, all of which suggest that water likely existed on Mars billions of years ago, ideal environments for preserving signs of past life, known as biosignatures. Unlike NASA, which is collecting samples over a wide area with its Perseverance rover, China won't have the luxury of collecting large quantities of samples across expansive regions. Therefore, the Chinese mission must be strategic in choosing a landing site with the best chance of delivering the crucial data they are seeking. To prepare, Chinese scientists have been studying Earth's hyperarid deserts to better understand where biosignatures might be hiding in such environments. Additionally, China is creating simulated Mars environments in laboratories to practice sample collection and analysis. The mission will use a combination of surface tools and drilling equipment to gather materials from various depths and geological layers, which will offer a more complete picture of Mars history. Special instruments are being developed to search for potential biosignatures in the collected samples, with a focus on organic molecules, hydrated minerals, and other markers that suggest Mars once supported life. In a similar vein, China has hinted at developing a helicopter drone to assist with sample gathering on Mars, following in the footsteps of NASA's Ingenuity helicopter. TN3 will also involve international cooperation with scientific instruments developed through partnerships with researchers from around the world. Once the samples are returned to Earth, scientists from different countries will work together to analyze the data and share their findings. This collaborative approach highlights the global importance of understanding Mars and its potential to support life. Of course, there is another international effort underway to return samples from Mars, which involves a partnership between NASA and ESA, European Space Agency. NASA's Perseverance rover, which has been on Mars for nearly four years, has been collecting samples of Martian soil and leaving them behind in sealed containers like a trail of breadcrumbs. The original plan had been to send a fetch rover and ascent vehicle later this decade to retrieve the samples and return them to Earth. However, earlier this year, it became clear that there aren't enough resources or funds at NASA or ESA to make this plan a reality. As a result, proposals are now being sought from private space companies that may be able to provide the necessary infrastructure for the mission. We can't discuss Mars without mentioning Elon Musk. He remains adamant that SpaceX will send humans to Mars as early as 2028, and if not then, definitely by 2030. If SpaceX's Starship proves successful, Musk could beat both NASA and China to returning the first human samples from Mars. Either way, between these three major players, the 2030s should be a decade in which we learn a lot more about the true nature of Mars and the early solar system. However, while there is much excitement on the horizon, NASA appears to be entering a period of significant change. Based on recent developments, it seems that all bets are off for NASA's future. 
U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has nominated billionaire businessman and private astronaut Jared Isaacman to be the next administrator of NASA. Isaacman has had a remarkable career, transitioning from piloting fighter jets to commanding SpaceX missions. He is not your typical executive. At just 41 years old, Isaacman is the CEO of Shift4, a payment processing company he founded in 1999. It was through this company that he made his fortune. Isaacman's involvement in aerospace began in 2012 when he co-founded Draken International, a company that trains U.S. military pilots for combat missions. Draken owns a fleet of about 150 tactical fighter aircraft, making it the largest fleet of privately owned fighter jets in the world. Jared sold his stake in Draken in 2020, but his space endeavors have made him a household name. He is the founder of SpaceX's Polaris program, which consists of private crewed space missions designed to push the boundaries of human space flight, advance research on space health, showcase new technologies, and support charitable causes. Isaac Mann has already made history twice in space. In 2021, he led Inspiration4, the world's first all-private orbital mission, a major step forward for commercial spaceflight. More recently, during the Dawn mission, he traveled farther from Earth than anyone had in over 50 years, even stepping outside the spacecraft for a commercial spacewalk. His hands-on experience as an astronaut makes him a unique and unconventional pick to lead NASA. Trump announced Isaacman's nomination on social media, calling him an ideal choice to drive NASA's mission of discovery and inspiration. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, who served during Trump's first term, also supported Isaac Mann, citing his vision and experience in the private sector as key assets for the job. Even Lori Garver, who was NASA's Deputy Administrator under President Obama, called Isaac Mann's nomination terrific news. It's not often we see such unanimous support across political lines, which suggests something significant is happening here. If confirmed, Isaac Mann will oversee NASA's $25 billion annual budget, which includes funding for the Artemis program. Artemis aims to send astronauts back to the moon and eventually beyond. But the Artemis program has faced its share of challenges, including delays, budget concerns, and growing competition from China, which is planning its own moon landing by 2030. With Isaac Mann in charge, there will likely be significant decisions ahead regarding NASA's future. Isaac Mann has already voiced concerns about the agency's reliance on the Space Launch System SLS, a rocket that costs upwards of $4 billion per launch and is not reusable. He has also pointed out that while NASA spends billions on redundant lunar landers, there is no backup for the SLS, a move he calls risky. Isaac Mann's commercial approach to space travel could lead to shifts in how NASA handles its programs, possibly favoring reusable spacecraft like SpaceX's Starship over traditional government-built systems. But Isaac Mann isn't just focused on cutting costs and streamlining operations. He's passionate about space exploration and believes it can inspire the next generation to dream big. Having seen Earth from space, he's committed to making humanity a true spacefaring species. Whether it's walking on the moon, reaching Mars, or going even further, Isaac Mann sees NASA as the driving force behind, making those dreams a reality. He has stated that under his leadership, NASA will ensure America never loses its place as a leader in space exploration, saying, we will inspire children to look up and dream of what's possible. Of course, NASA's current board of decision makers couldn't step aside without making one final disappointing announcement. The Artemis II mission has been delayed once again. While not entirely shocking, it's still disheartening. Artemis II, which was initially planned for September 2025, has now been pushed to the spring of 2026. This mission is designed to send a crew of four astronauts on a trip to lunar orbit and back, similar in scope to the successful Artemis 1, but with people on board this time. After the success of Artemis 1, it was expected that progress towards a crewed flight would happen more quickly. Unfortunately, this hasn't been the case. We know of two major issues that have developed with the Orion capsule following the first test flight in 2021. The most significant problem has been with the capsule's heat shield. While it's normal for heat shields to lose some material upon re-entry, 
Orion returned missing large chunks of material, which is a serious concern. NASA has now identified the cause of this damage. It turns out that the low heat portion of the entry caused more damage than expected. The heat shield material performed as expected during the high heat phase of reentry, but it failed during the lower temperature phase. This issue arose due to the skip reentry method NASA used during Artemis 1. In this method, the capsule hits the atmosphere lightly and bounces off, reducing velocity before the second, more intense reentry. That first skip caused the heat shield damage. To prevent this from happening again, NASA's new plan is to skip the skip and go for a direct entry instead. This will involve astronauts coming down at a much higher velocity, generating more heat, but it's expected to be safer overall. As the mission approaches, we expect to hear more ideas from NASA, and we'll continue to stay tuned to see how things unfold.